Ricky Steninsky. So this is when three childhood friends basically pull a prank. It all starts with them accidentally burning someone's house and riding on a pair of underwear or something. Ricky Steninsky. So they've been using this guy as an alibi to get out of trouble. And 20 years later, uh, the non-existing Ricky uh, becomes a handy alibi for something immature they do, like go out in, in another city for some stupid concert, watch the World Series, all that sort of shit. Now, I will say this. This is a this is something different. I've never actually seen anything like this before. It's not... It's decent. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. I can only give this movie a chance because of Andrew Santino. I thought it would be, you know, great. You know, I thought maybe they, this would be good. But they somehow decided to replace... Uh, uh, Bobby Lee with a gay vanilla black guy and have John Cena play the role of a sober friend yet he pranked them to show up for Ken for for this is the most confusing part the story is all over the place I'm even confused trying to tell the detail so when these guys almost get caught out John Cena's character Rod or Stinky Rob he's a sober friend he doesn't drink but he somehow pranks them into showing up to celebrate not having cancer with a bottle of champagne. Makes no sense. The story is all over the place. And this this movie is so extra. Like, there, there are a few funny scenes, uh, or they try to make them funny. And, and I have a problem with John Cena. Dude, you are a superstar. You speak Mandarin. You're a muscular guy. You're way successful to be dragging in, to be dressing in drag and acting a fool on a silly, silly movie. That's never going to make enough money. That's never going to get enough credit. That's never going to do anything better. This was the worst acting job I've ever seen. This was a catastrophe. And I'm not even talking about the whole concept of this. Hey, I get it. It's quite hilarious to have... Like, what the hell is Zac Afron doing in this stupid film? He's a serious actor. I know he's done some stupid movies in the past. Jesus, John Cena, you in the DCU, you've done great stuff, you're the, I mean like, what are you doing here, you've played Fast and Furious, why are you in this, wearing a dress, why, why, they just threw in a bunch of useless actors, a bunch of washed up, never gonna succeed, never gonna win a Grammy type of actors, and, and <sighs> I'm so disappointed. Okay, enough of my disappointment. Let's just look at the movie theatrically and similar. So, what was the whole point? The whole point is these guys make up a lie about a character who doesn't exist. And then they hire an actor to play the character because they've been writing down details about this person that way. They call it the Bible. That way they don't forget the details. And they give it to this guy who's an actor, who studies it, and builds a whole persona. Bear in mind, this Bible is basically a book of over 20 years of story. So... If you're really a good, it's, a, it's an incredible script, basically. So he takes this script and he brings it to life. He becomes this Ricky Stenenki character. And on top of that, he even changes his name legally. And when he gets found out, he doesn't go to jail. Because he didn't actually steal any money. He keeps his job. Everything is great, apparently. He helps his great business start a merger. Great. Everything is grand. No, no consequences for lying for these guys. Their wives forgive them. They become friends again. Their lives, no one's life is ruined, basically. So this movie's moral story is lie about a friend and then let him change his name. And everybody knows this guy's a different, he's a lie, he's not the same person. But hey, everything is great. We keep the name, we keep the character. Nobody gets in trouble. Their wives don't beat him up. Their wives don't leave him. Their girlfriends don't leave him. This guy doesn't go to jail for getting a high-tech job. None of that happened. This guy's girlfriend doesn't get fired for a bullshit story. Everything is great. What the fuck did I just watch? Ah, oh, what a colossal waste of time. But it's entertaining, I'll give you that. It's really entertaining. Unexpectedly and oddly entertaining. But the casting is crap. Like... There's no chemistry within these guys. John Cena, Zac Afron, uh, 
Andrew Santino and the other black guy. There's no chemistry. There's no way these guys could be real friends in real life. This was a, like a, 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 a cheap imitation of Hangover that failed horribly because people can't act. Ah, my God. This is rubbish. This is absolutely rubbish. Ah. And Zac Efron doesn't look like himself. He, it seems like he's a guy in debt and he had to do this movie to pay a few bills. That's what it looks to me like. Don't get me started on. And it looks like Andrew just decided to quit working with Bobby Lee for a few months and do this ridiculous movie so he couldn't make any nasty Asian jokes to Bobby Lee, his best friend. And John Cena, I don't even know why he's in this movie. Oh my god. Ah. What a joke. It's a cheap imitation of Hangover and nobody gets drunk for that matter. Oh my god. This is the worst shit ever. I don't know why anyone with sense would watch this. Oh my god. I'll never get back my hour. But it was not not bad. I was entertained a little. I just wish it, they showed more. That's my opinion. I wish they did more, but whatever. Anyway, uh, remember to hit that like or sub button. Leave a comment on comment section if you hated this or liked this. Whatever. Tell me your opinion. If you haven't seen it, go see it. But if you actually care about what I think, don't fucking see it. Now that was entertaining. Please let us hang out yet another time. Remember to like and subscribe. Adios, folks. Adios.